Hello and welcome back to the Join Dota League yeah, Season 3 yeah. here on Hefla TV 2. This is going to be Game 2 of a best of two series between Bananas and Pajamas and European Love Story. Uh, well, Game 1, European Love Story were able to get their hands on the Lycanthrope as well as the Shadow Shaman as their first two picks, and that pretty much sums up the game. When, as you could expect, um, even though they had a couple of pretty sloppy initiations, there wasn't a lot that Bananas and Pajamas could do when their entire map was ripped apart by Wolves as well as by Serpent Words. Uh, so in the end, that is going to be the story of the first game, but we're not going to be seeing that in Game 2, as European Love Story are not going to uh, give that one away, and hopefully Bananas and Pajamas can make a comeback and make this series one for one. Um, we'll have to see. They're going to take a little bit of the reserve time to contemplate what they want to give the way of European love story. Uh, they will go ahead and leave the Brewmaster and similar heroes like the Razor still in the pool um, while banning out that faceless void. So, Bananas and Pajamas have a decent amount of things to pick from. Death Prophet Shadow Shaman is a similar opener to the Lycanthrope Shadow Shaman in that it's able to take towers very effectively if you're able to win team fights. And I would not be opposed to this coming out from Bananas and Pajamas if they decide to go for it. Also, the push coming out from those two heroes is different in that it's not based on summons. Uh, so, counter push really doesn't do all that much. You need to burst down the Death Prophet uh, while she has the Exorcism Man. Make sure that the Shadow Shaman isn't able to get the wards in a prime position, either by killing him before he's able to drop the wards, or by forcing him into a position where he needs to drop the wards in a position that's away from your towers. You want to take fights away from your base so that they're not able to uh, turn those into... Um, your structure's down. In the meantime, Bananas and Pajamas instead go for the Doom and Brewmaster, and Razor Earthshaker the opening for European Love Story. While Doom and Brewmaster is a solid first two, lets them fight decently while well in the mid game, although it does not have the potent um, power of being able to transition into those snowball y pushes uh, that we've seen so many times in the current metagame. Uh, well, yeah, Doom could be a potential mech carrier for his team, and then Brewmaster a decent Blink Initiator, Doom a hero that's very hard to shut down Damn early as far as farm is concerned, but on the same token offers very little to counter push. Sorry about that, I'm still a little bit uh, tired, so hopefully that won't affect the cast too much, but uh, then again I believe this is the last game for the day as we go into this series. The next couple bands are coming out from both teams. We have Ancient Apparition, Death Prophet taken out by European Love Story, and Tidehunter is banned out by Bananas and Pajamas. I'd like to see the Shadow Shaman banned out, although they do have first pick, so if they wanna, do want to pick that out of the banning stage, they could go ahead and do so. But if they do not, Earthshaker plus Shadow Shaman is a wonderful supporting duo for European Love Story to snag up for themselves, and I think that will be the choice if Bananas and Pajamas do not uh, take up that Shadow Shaman. Game 1, we saw the power of the Shadow Shaman. He got all of the Tier 1 towers done with the Server Ward drop, made pushing high ground a lot easier. Um, yeah, combos very well with the current playstyle, and Ten seconds to go. also just a hero that offers great single target lockdown as well as that Five nuking seconds. power. Yeah, I, I really do need to uh, take a break after these games. Um, Reserve. Yeah, let's let's wake myself up and hopefully we'll have some exciting Dota here to make sure that I will not uh, suffer. And it looks like we are going to have a pretty early push coming out from both of these teams as Shadow Shaman and Pugna are going to be the pickups. I like the Pugna pick on European Love Story. I think they have tools to make him work uh, with their first three. Razor and Earthshaker are decent heroes at absorbing the focus away from the um, Pugna. Earthshaker, he can jump in, initiate, and cause havoc in the team fights while the Pugna is just blasting away at the towers. And Razor, similarly, the way that he's built currently with building Mechanism first into Aghanim Scepter later, uh, is also just great at uh, taking a lot of the focus away from the Pugna. Uh, Clockwork, so they pick up for Bananas and Pajamas, and this makes life a lot more difficult uh, for the aforementioned Pugna, as well as the Earthshaker. If he's able to catch out any of those single heroes, they really can't do a whole lot about the damage that Clockwork puts out when he's able to hook onto a single target. Earthshaker can't get off a of spell except for Echo Slam inside the um, Clockwork Cog, so it's possibly just not even worth it to try. Try your best to uh, punch your way through the Cogs if you can, or get your allies to help you out there uh, with a Force Staff. Potential uh, Force Staff for the uh, Earthshaker or the Pugna would be uh, very useful. Pugna more than likely is going to be the one that's going to have the farm to build that and might even be able to get it as one of his first items, especially if Razor is the one building the mech for his team. European Love Story, get to go ahead and pick up the Venomancer, a hero that's seen quite a decent amount of play in the last couple of games, although having fallen off 
after 6.79, I believe. Uh, but still, does function very well in uh, pushing lineups as well as decent Damn, at six, turtling six, out. Uh, we do have both of the uh, summonable wards on the field with the plague wards coming out from the venomancer as well as the serpent wards from the shadow shaman venomancer definitely gets the short end of the stick in that way but makes up for it in the fact that he has more magical damage in the team fights with his ultimate especially when he gets it up to higher levels and potentially even an agonim scepter um as well as his laning presence and ability to get kills is um, arguably a little bit better i don't know both of them are more or less functioning in the same way. In most lineups, they zone out offlaners while they have a good uh, lockdown spell shackles from Shadow Shaman as well as the Gale from Venomancer, which is just absolutely ridiculous slow uh, that lasts for 15 seconds. Starting out at 50% uh, slow, Dyer's just second. really great at chasing down heroes. Um, yeah. All around, I think Venomancer is a worse Shadow Shaman, but if he's not in the pool, picking him up is still a worthy cause. And while the last couple bands coming up from both these teams, we have a Bristleback banned out by the Bananas and Pajamas and Disruptor banned out by European Love Story. Uh, Disruptor is an interesting band. I'm not sure I would have seen that one coming, but Clockwork with the uh, Disruptor is very easy setup for that Stag Storm Connect field combo if you're able to catch uh, one or two heroes out to go. in the cogs. So, Five seconds. yeah, I, I think that's um, possibly one of the reasons that they go for it. Uh, the ban here. Also, it's uh, Glimpse is always a wonderful spell, and maybe they're even looking for something along the lines of a Marana to make up their aggressive tri-lane, or tri-lane of some sort, with the Earthshaker, Venomancer, and Marana as their um, three there. Um, I think if you do pick up the Marana as your last pick, I think you do have to go aggressive and leave the Razor solo safe lane versus the Clock, and then have the Pugna mid against the Brewmaster. Well, so still waiting on these last couple of pickups as Bananas and Pajamas have plenty of reserve time in order to contemplate this last pickup for themselves. Uh, Skyrath Mage already banned out. Uh, that would have been a wonderful support pickup uh, for them. Uh, quite possibly one of the best ones is the uh, Shadow Shaman with the uh, Skyrath Mage early on's graded zoning, as well as getting some kills with the Concussive Shot into Shackles. Uh, with Skyrath Mage ulti into the Cogs of the Clockwork, I think it just combos very well with what they have to offer in their team. Um, I'm not sure if there's any other heroes that are going to do the same job that a Skyrath Mage does in this lineup, but we'll have to see what the next pickup for Bananas and Pajamas is going to be. Getting another Blink Initiator might also be a solid choice for them. Um, Ten seconds to go. Just having a team that's really good at jumping in, but no, they go for the Silencer here. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this pickup at all. Um, it looks like this is going to be a support Silencer. Potentially with some weird laning choices, they could make this into a farming Silencer. But honestly, I don't really see what they're going to stop coming up from European Love Story. It's going to be very hard to disjoint the initiation coming up from an Earthshaker with a Blink Dagger. His Echo Slam is pretty much instant. And very hard to stop unless you have a beautifully timed silence. I'm not even sure if I've seen that really happen. And there's just not a very clear chain of initiation coming out from European love story that you're going to be able uh, to disjoint with that global silence Reserve ultimate. Um, I don't know. Draining the mana from these heroes is kind of useful, especially against the Earthshaker who doesn't have the best mana pool uh, with Curse of the Silent. And later on, the uh, global silence, if he does go for the Aghanim Scepter Refresher build that has been popularized as of late. I don't know. Usually, silencers better off against teams that are extremely reliant on their ultimate skills. Uh, currently, I'm not really seeing that, although they do use them well. I think that, yeah, the, the, there's not like the dream of the huge... Wombo combo that you'd be expecting maybe out of like a Faceless Void, uh, Dark Sears, Sand King, something along those lines. It has a very clear chain of initiation. We'll have to see how Farm With Me is going to take this up, but that does suggest that this is going to be a Farming Silencer um, with a Support Clockwork and Shadow Shaman. Uh, potentially a Doom, Doom Jungle coming out from them as well. Um, also an option, although I don't like that choice with the picks that Yules have. Either way, let's get into this game. We have a pause to start us out as my mouse has completely disappeared. There we go. As we get into this game, at the early pause, it will help me introduce all these teams in time. We're going to have Zella, 
playing on the Pugna on the Radiant side with the rest of his team, Yules, as well as Silvos playing on the Earthshaker. Return performance for him, Yunus playing on the Venomancer this time, and it looks like he's going to be the farming one, where we have Ball playing on the Visage, and that will leave Zella playing on the Razor. Yeah, that last pick, Visage, kind of caught me by surprise. I'll go back to it after we introduce um, the Bananas and Pajama side, with X and Grey playing on the Doom, with... Uh, Farm with me playing on the Silencer, Roy Mother Loving Mustang playing on the Brewmaster, Piff playing on the Clockwork, spreading a very cool set, I might add, and Shiva playing on the Shadow Shaman. Uh, yeah, looks like we have a little bit of a hero swap as well as Triple C Triple A is going to take up the Venomancer. But yeah. Uh, Eunice is actually going to be playing in the Razor, so for now, looks like we're going to have an aggressive Trilin with Venomancer, Visage, as well as Earthshaker, Zella playing on the Pogna with Solo Razor down in bottom, up against the Clockwork. This could work, although not the best, uh, aggressive Trilin that I can think of. Um, it has plenty of damage, and a good way to put pressure and punish this, uh, Farming Silencer, who with just the Shadow Shaman in lane really can't do all that much. I'd like to see them block the pole camp, but after the pole camp's been blocked, they should be able to win that lane handily. Yeah, for now, we're just, uh, kind of chilling, waiting for the pause to subside. And yeah, that's uh, kind of the state of the game right now. There's not a whole lot to talk about this game. It's going to be definitely a lot different than the one that we saw in game one. Yules are <coughs> giving a lot of room to this visage to get up a lot of farm on his person. Almost functioning like an extra core, but really, Yules have no late game to follow on. Silence or Doom late game is absolutely going to crush what Yules have to offer. Um, so I think they're going to need to start snowballing a little bit early, but with the Pugna, it's definitely an option. And we could just be seeing... A little bit of throwback to 6.79 Necrobook Dodo with Pugna as the uh, main carrier of that where we just have uh, them being able to 5-man down those towers. I don't know, it worked for them in game 1, although I think even if they didn't win the early mid game, they still would have been able to take that one. Um, we'll see. Let's see how their execution is going to pan out. I'm particularly interested to see how this visage is going to work. A hero that used to be amazing and picked... All of the time when the tri-lane meta was really at its peak, this is a great tri-lane hero with soul assumption damage being offered, but then he got kind of nerfed a lot, and then once the meta kind of shifted towards, um, not tri-lane versus tri-lane, and... Yeah, he just kind of got left behind, really, the only time we see Visage reliably is when there's a Draw Ranger also on the field. Uh, Visage falls off very heavily later on, but then again, if he's able to get the farm, and we can see some farming performance uh, similar to something like Aoi 2000, where he gets just like a ridiculous Aghanim Scepter, as well as a Salt Kuras, this could be wonderful for Yules to start 5-manning down the towers. Um, that said, now that the pause has subsided, we'll be able to see how these lanes are going to work out for both teams, as... Yeah, Venomancer and Earthshaker are going to start waddling their way up towards top, um, but they are going to be followed by the Visage as well as the Pugna this time. Um, yeah, I'd assume that Zell is going to go towards mid after helping with this four-man rotation. Um, but also on the side of Bananas and Pajamas, they're going to make a similar rotation, um, leaving the Silencer mid, actually. Up against the Pugna, Silencer mid should be doing just fine. Uh, going to be annoying for the Pugna to deal with, but eventually Pugna should be able to push down his tower. Not a whole lot that Silencer can do about that one. Uh, Draining mana is only going to do so much, especially when you want to be spamming those spells anyway. Yeah, so Venomancer leading the charge as you have uh, some wards presumably dropped in the pole camp. And well, the sentry going to be dropped on the small camp to make sure that they don't have available. Uh, that extra bit of uh, experience, as well as just destroying the lane equilibrium. That's going to be very important for Yules to maintain. Uh, honestly, if um, Bananas and Pajamas know that they're going up in aggressive trialing coming out from the Radiant side, I'd like to see them block this camp so that they won't have that pull available, uh, just to make sure that there's no polling going on. Uh, but they also have an Observer Ward to give vision of these support rotations, and yeah, Venomancer can be left alone a little bit, but he really needs to be babysat by one or two heroes early on. This Earthshaker might be doing some solo roaming towards mid. Uh, Pugna with his Decrepify Pugna Blast combo, especially once he gets the life drain at level 6. A fairly easy kill. They've spotted them out and they're looking for a D ward, but not going to be able to find it with that sentry placed. Uh, potentially they'll think that there's an actual ward there, but a lot of wards being committed up in top with a... Pretty much the full barrage. We have two observers dropped by the right hand, two sentries as well, and two observers dropped by the dire. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a brewmaster shadow shaman 
dual lane, not something that I actually expected. I thought the silencer was going to be farming up here, but in the end, this is pretty much going to be uh, functioning as an offlane brewmaster, uh, because up against this lane, there's very little they can do. Uh, if he gets stunned, as well as uh, Gailed, or Gailed and then stunned, he doesn't really have a great place to run. Uh, but for now, he's going to interrupt the pull, so well played by uh, Roy Mustang, as the uh, rest of his heroes are just kind of lollygagging around. I know the Shadow Shum is going to soak experience, but that's about all he can do, especially with Shackles level 1. I'm not sure if I like that choice. I think Aether Shock would serve him better in this lane to start it off, but I don't think really anything is going to change the fact that Venomancer is going to get great farm, and Brewmaster is not going to get great farm. Currently in 0-0. Zero zero. Once the creep waves under his tower, maybe you'll be able to secure some. But might even have to just commit a Thunderclap in order to get that. Uh, well, the mid matchup, Pugna versus Silencer. It's fairly even so far, 5-2 and two compared to 4-2. and two. I think it's going to stay about that way. And bottom matchup, Razor is going to have a little bit of an edge here up against the Clockwork, 4-2 and two versus 2-1, two doubling up exactly at the first couple minutes of the game. Um, but then again, Clockwork's not going to need much more than his level 6 uh, before he's able to do stuff, and already has his level 3, and Razor's not doing about much. We have a Fissure attempted top, but it's not going to get a block off, and, well, in the end, it's just kind of going to be an awkward Fissure in the middle of the lane. Blocking off the range creep will secure negligible damage to the tier 1 tower. Dyer's mid -tower. Yep, well, no Silencer gets himself a regeneration rune, actually denies that, as he does not have the bottle to put that in just yet, it is delivering to himself on the Courier, he just gave Pugna a little bit more room than maybe he would have wanted to. Pugna already with the bottle online, starting to spam out those Pugna Blasts and putting some pressure on to farm with me uh, in this mid. But still, I'm yeah, not really feeling the Silencer mid up against the Pugna. I think that with the starts that they're having, they'll get an early mechanism on the Venomancer or the Razor. Uh, either one, whoever they want to build it. And the other one can just tank up, get the Aghanim Scepter earlier on. And what have you, potentially a Veil coming out from the Venomancer with the uh, Earthshaker as well as... Uh, Pugna and Venomancer, I think that's a worthy cause as well. And, I don't know, they should be able to start 5 banding down those towers. Um, this passive game is probably favoring them. I don't know, this Jungle Doom is going to be the X Factor, I feel, for Bananas and Pajamas. They need to get something uh, more out of him than just a little bit of extra farm. He gets the Aura, but uh, I'm not even sure if I like the Aura this game, at least to start us off. But, I mean, it's really hard to pass that up as a Doom. It accelerates your jungle farming speed a lot. Um, but I think more of a Utility Doom that would be more effective early on would help them a whole heck of a lot more. Getting a Mechanism for their team would be wonderful. Um, or even a Blink Dagger with that War Stomp combo to jump onto the Pugna uh, before they're able to get jumped by the Earthshaker. A little bit of a wraparound coming out from Paul. He has two points in the Soul Assumption, one in the Grave Chill. No big surprises there. Uh, but for now, these lanes are a lot more passive than I thought or hoped that they'd be. This is... I don't know, Zen Dota from both of these teams. Just kind of agreeing not to kill anybody, let the Doom jungle away. He's falling very low, the Scorched Earth region will help him a little bit. Um, actually, he might be forced to back off after getting this large creep. Um, That's yeah, he'll be fine. Actually, the first blood going to be drawn up in top as they're diving deep into the tower with a Fissure. It's going to keep the uh, Venomancer too deep, and eventually they're going to lose the Visage as well. Urshaker looking for the return kill onto the Shadow Shaman, and... Well, he might be giving up his life as well. He's slowed down by Rormaster. He gets a decent Fissure. Shadow Shaman's going to be forced back because of that one, and Silva's trying to run away. He'll be successful. Yeah, I mean, that just kind of came out of nowhere. The dive from them was very overzealous, I feel, and in the end, they gave up a lot of what their uh, streak was doing for them as far as getting that extra farm in the Venomancer. Yeah. I'm very peculiar. Two kills being given away, ban bananas and pajamas. And, well, Doom is sitting on the top of the CS board as well as on the net worth just under the Razor. He will back off for the center. I kind of like this choice, just doing a little jig, making a lot of noise inside the base. Ends up using it on cooldown for 20 seconds. What a scrub. Didn't cancel that animation fast enough. Oh, well, I don't think that's going to be important at all. Um, but, anyway. Arcane Boots picked up by him, so he'll probably be getting the Blink Dagger combo with the Centaur later on. Pugna decrups himself. Um... Yep. That's about it. To make sure he doesn't get disarmed, I feel. Um, but yeah. 
Action has been, for the most part, isolated in the lane. Silvos is looking for the Doom, but Doom isn't low enough. Already went back to base once. It does steal a very cheeky creep, but he might pay for that as the War Stomp comes through. And with the Scorched Earth movement speed, this might be enough. Grave Shield goes on to X and Gray as well as the Fissure, and he's going to be delayed for now. Shadowsham was not able to get in range for Shekels or an Aether Shock, but Silvos, he's still getting chased down. The Scorched Earth is going to wear off coming out from X and Gray, and they'll have another Grave Troll coming out from cooldown fairly shortly. Still trying to look for the scope. Brewmaster's roaming around looking for already slowed down. The Thunderclap should be enough. Ether Shock Thunderclap, enough to get that kill. Warsaw going off the mark from X and Gray, and in the end, that's going to be the damage of this lane as Brewmaster gets yet another kill. 2-0 and 1 in this Brewmaster, and he has his Blink Dagger at 6 minutes in. Mind you, he doesn't have boots, but <laughs> that's uh, one of the fastest Blink Daggers I've seen. He's got to put it to good use as they shackle up Triple C, Triple A, and just bring him down ruthlessly. I don't know. Bananas and Pajamas are off to a wonderful start. After the earlier laning phase wasn't looking so hot. Yeah, I don't know. The uh, clockwork down in bottom goes for the phase boots to help him CS up against the Razor, but he went for a kill in mid. Um, yeah, hookshot on cooldown. Wasn't able to get the kill in the Pugna. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. What are Yules going to start doing about this? I think the game plan hasn't changed in the slightest. They need to get their core items up and then start 5 manning down the towers. And that's how they're going to get back into this game. Um, yeah, and then Bananas and Pajamas' game plan is kind of the opposite. They can get kills here or there, and that's great, and they can push towers here and there, but it's not a necessity. They can take this one late. They'll have a Doom. They'll have a Silencer when it comes to the late game. They scale incredibly well, as well as good heroes, to initiate the team fights and the Clockwork, as well as the Brewmaster, especially considering the fact that Yules are more than likely not going to get a BKB, with the exception of the Razor, who will get that as presumably a second or third item. Uh, but still, the Brewmaster's impact going, is going to be longer than a lot of the times we've seen where the enemy team is forced to build in the BKBs a lot faster than that. And even with the BKB, they're not immune. They still have the Doom in order to stop the BKB from coming out. Yeah. But Immense are still CSing well, so uh, not all is lost for sure coming out from Yules. And because of that, they're still not looking too shabby in the net worth department. Um, from the position 1 to position 6, and in fact, position 7, on the board, they're... Um, only about a thousand gold apart, which is definitely saying something. The gold graph is slightly in the favor of Benes Pajamas at about 2,000, and experience is a little bit more so at 3,000. Um, but yeah, it's definitely not unsurmountable. Doom falling low inside the jungle. No supports are in there to capitalize on it, however, and he will have the two portions of his mechanism completed, so he'll be building that for his team. I think this is a fine choice. Uh, coming out from the Doom, he'll want a Blink Dagger later on for the initiation, but... Yeah, that's about it. Regeneration rune spotted and denied as Doom. Man fighting up against the centaur will win the man fight after devouring his father. Um, so, well. Yeah. Back to, uh, down. whatever this is. We have Clockwork looking for the rotation. With the hook shot, he's going to bump into the air shaker and stuns him and root towards the Pugna. Pugna is as good as dead. He decropifies only for a little bit, but that's just going to delay the inevitable as the global silence comes out as well. And Silva's is just kind of standing there, deep in from the razor. They want to make a little bit of a turn on this. He's not stealing very much damage or didn't actually get the link off. And I don't think he'll be able to do it. Shiva trying to TP out. Will they have the Fisher coming up for cooldown? One second doesn't cancel Shiva. The animation too long coming out from Silva's. So in the end, 5-0 and zero going to be the kill score. A lot of commitment for that Pugna kill, but I still think it's worth it. Um, getting that one. I don't know, ending up uh, getting the uh, stun on the Earthshaker is actually pretty important there, as if the Earthshaker was able to get that fissure and possibly bump the uh, clockwork out of the uh, cogs, that could have been huge. But, I don't know. I'm not sure if that actually worked. Brewmaster, after picking up the Blink Dagger, does have his boots, so on the normal farming path even, though he got the Blink Dagger at an absurdly uh, early time, and the Venomancer is actually doing better in lane, uh, now that the supports have all left him, and 1v1 versus Brewmaster should be fine. Spans out these wards is just constantly putting a little bit of pressure on the Brewmaster, pretty much just to the point where it's a little bit uncomfortable, um, but not unmanageable, but still able to secure a lot of good farm for himself. Sitting at 48-0 and zero in the CS board. Honestly, I'm not a huge... I don't have a great idea of what to expect from Bananas and Pajamas lineup. As this game goes further on, they're... Heroes peak at very different times. There's not a clear uh, synergy when it comes to them. But they do have good pickoff potential as well as a good way to team fight. Um, although, nothing huge in the AoE department. They have great ways to split the attention of the enemy heroes. With the Clockwork jumping as well as the Brewmaster getting for the split and just making general mayhem. 
So yeah, the Clockwork has the hookshot online. Again, I'd like to see Biff uh, go around and look for some more kills. He still only has his phase boots, which are good for snowballing, but honestly, I'm not a huge fan of him in this game. He goes on to the Earthshaker, and Earthshaker caught out without any creeps around and still goes. He actually gets the fissure off because one of the bounces went outside of the uh, fissure to one of the creeps, but in the end, uh, Clockwork finds himself another kill, and Pongna kills the Shadow Shaman in the mid lane. We have more action coming around as well. Brewmaster does not have mana for the split and doesn't have a stick in order to get that way. Roshan's saying hello as a blink forward from the Brewmaster, trying to catch anything else, but does not have mana to use anything at all. Uh, so in the end, it is just going to be everybody backing off. He's probably going to... Um, yeah, there's, there's your Arcane Boots uh, for War Mustang. Had he had those... Earlier on, he would have been in a lot better position. We have a triple fissure coming out from the Earthshaker, but he's just going to be rassed out and makes decent map damage from the Curse of the Silent. Mechanism online for the Doom. So the core items for Bananas and Pajamas are coming out. Um, yeah, with the Arcanes, as well as the Mech on the Doom, as well as Arcanes and Blink on the Brewmaster, they have great ways to fight, and they still have the Ultimates available on both of them. Um, so let's see, Venomancer looks like he's going to be the target, they just walk straight up, no blink necessary, as he starts with the clap, and probably won't even need the ultimate, Triple C, Triple A does not have his ultimate skill at 6, and does go for it, or does not go for it, uh, later on, and, well, we get a tower tonight as well, so more economic damage being done by Bananas and Pajamas, Razor is really the only hero that's getting much out of this map coming out from Yules at the moment, Pugna and Venomancer aren't looking too shabby, but then again, not looking too great either, um, yeah, I don't know. It looks like Bananas and Pajamas are going to be able to snowball this to victory. And, well, although I said that they didn't have the um, best five-man pushing, that's completely negated when you get a Shadow Shaman Serpent Wards online. Uh, so I completely withdraw that. They now have triple Arcane Boots, lots of sustain coming out from this team with the Scorched Earth, as well as the Mech on the Doom, and just the amount of mana sustain that they'll have. Silencer is going to take a lot of damage. He's caught a use of Global Silence with the Vistage Promoters chasing down him, however. Um, they might be able to get that. Uh, yeah, in the end. Arm with me, just salves himself up. I believe that was the Clockwork Salve, and is just fine and dandy. So, board secured the Tier 1 Tower in the meantime, so all around the map, Bananas and Pajamas just having a great advantage, and... I don't know, this is pretty much the opposite of what we saw in Game 1, coming out for Bananas and Pajamas, and... Well, it's working out for them, they now have a drum on each team. Uh, we have one on the Silencer, as well as one on the Razor. Um, so a lot of those early, effective... Or items are coming online. Unfortunately for the Pugna, he does not have his mech in his back. Nowhere closing. Gets jumped on in mid. The Brewmaster split comes out. He's going to stun him up, and that's a very easy kill. Ether Shock. Kill secured by the Shadow Shum. The Brewlings are going to be able to focus down this uh, Nether Word. I thought they'd actually take that out a lot faster. Um, but in the end, 16 more gold going the way of the Brew. Uh, potentially could have. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. Down in bottom, we have some action as they slow down X and Gray with the Grave Tool follow-up Fissure. They get a nice block. I'm mean, actually no, he's able to walk through the trees. Does he have enough health to survive? It doesn't look like it. His razor gets the last hit with the eye of the storm. And well, Clockwork Hookshot, he jumps in onto Eunice with the Clockwork Flare. He's not able to get the cogs off. Wasn't able to find a good angle, and Puff is just kind of caught out. He pops a battery assault, but to not much avail. As the mid is kind of where the action's going to calm down. Yeah. Mid-tier one tower is going to be the um, cost of that fight in bottom. And, well, we have a nice visual lands onto two, but not a lot of follow-up as the familiar is on the ground, so no damage coming out from him. And, well, I don't know, the action very spread out for now, and... Yule's just not able to get the better half of that exchange. I kind of made a comparison where, um, Venomancer was the worst... Uh, wor uh, a worse Shadow Shaman or his words. They can push towers, sure, but they take a long time to set up, and they're just nowhere compared to the real deal. And you kind of see that. They drop the tower to... About a third down, but that's about all they can do. Invis Rune picked up by Roy, and, well, Roy Mustang looking for blood. He does save the ultimate for another 60 seconds, but with the Thunderclap and a couple guaranteed crits, he could probably get Zella. I don't know, Silencer, he's going to fall to the Ven or Visage, as the Venomancer was able to contribute to Gale, as well as a couple of slows there. He drops some wars, and then TPs out in the front of those uh, creeps. Ward coming out from the Clockwork, <laughs> that was really close. But in the end, not going to scare that kill on the Venom. <clears throat> Still, I think if uh, Yules are able to start fighting down these towers with the Pugna, uh, they'll be still looking to be in this game. But then again, for now, Bananas and Pajamas have the control. And if they maintain this control, it should be a fairly good win for them. Um, yeah, let's see how they're going to be able to execute this and where their next point of attack is going to be. Bananas and Pajamas, they have the surfboards online yet again. They could go for the tier 1 tower in bottom. That's a fairly easy place to fight. Or if they win a team fight, they could even go down mid and 
maybe catch a tier two or maybe get the tier two tower up top as well. Venomancer is hanging around to drop some surf wards, but they're just going to be farmed up by farm with me. The silencer hasn't managed to find a lot of intelligence stolen just yet, only being involved in three kills just yet. Um, but as the game starts progressing, the uh, mana problems for the Earthshaker are going to start being more uh, relevant as he's going to start losing some of that. And I don't know, he's probably going to need to get his Arcane Boots before his Blink Dagger. Although, I usually prefer to see um, the Blink Dagger ASAP and maybe get the um, Soul Ring or something along the lines to help with the mana issues. Um, but then again, into the Roshan Pit. Bananas and Pajamas go with the Serp Wards committed. This is the map objective that they want to take, and would they be able to do so? I think so. Farm with me showing on the map, and the other lanes are pushing out decently. Clockwork's also hanging around bottom, and all they really need are these three years in the pit in order to do so. Um, yeah, I think they'll be able to get away with this uncontested. They are a little bit of drawing on the map coming out from the Visage. He has some familiars. He is currently stunning up Piv, and with the Razor, he's going to get the Static Link off, but doesn't really go for much more. With the Static Link completely maxed out, 28 damage only in one pulse. Roshan is fall into the dire is Venomancer kind of shows his face with the haste rune and well the Aegis was still on the ground actually uh, Silencer picks out one up towards the end of the day um, is mid -tower the map trade is going to be better for them as the tier 1 tower still stands anyway so not even losing a single tier 1 for that Roshan attempt and succeeded to attempt well, Pagno Ward committed down to the ground as Zella wants to drop some more blasts on his tower. With the Fist of Mars, he might be able to do so. A nice Fist, which catches out too. First stomp, second stomp, but Chief is he um, healed up by the mech. And now, with the jump in, they lose the Aegis onto the um, Silencer. However, they doom up Eunice, and Eunice can't do anything with the Brewmaster. But also coming through, Boulder Toss onto the Earthshaker. They try to focus down X and Grey with the... Um, Visage, but now a nice Fissure also delays things from the Earthshaker. They're able to focus on Shadow Shaman. One more Soul Sentry was all they needed. Ball trying to go into the woods. Will he be able to make it out alive? The Doom is going to fall to the Pugna. One more Blast. Unfortunately for the Visage, he will not survive. And Roy Mustang going to be able to clean up another kill behind the Tier 1 Tower. A very spread out fight from both of these teams. Currently in the favor of Benes and Pajamas. Will there be any more fatalities? Let's see. Piff should be able to walk out safely and... Yeah. Three for two in Aegis is going to be the expense. Uh, blink away. Gale not going to do anything. Just had to catch him out. Blade Mail on the Clockwork is going to be very helpful, especially against the Pugna. Uh, if he's sitting inside a Pugna Blast and Pugna eats the uh, Blade Mail return damage, it's going to be quite significant for him, especially with the health pool of only 853 to work with. Uh, Pugna himself is probably going to be going towards an Aghanim Scepter, but might also be going towards BKB. We have a Decrupt Fly going the way of Shiva with the Pugna Blast and Life Drain Shiva's. Absolutely destroyed. 233 is KDA4 Shadow Shaman after that death. Clockwork Flare, um, that little flare, um, I don't know, rocket is really throwing me off. It looks almost like the hook. Um, so it's kind of hard to tell. Either way, Tier 1 Tower is going to fall the way of Yules. So striking back in the tower department, and I mean this game is just so close as far as gold is concerned. I mean you just look at the net worth chart. Pretty much everybody above the Shadow Shaman is comparable as far as the uh, gold is um as far as gold. Uh, yeah, and only a 5,000 lead going to be built by uh, Bananas and Pajamas, and that will be tapered down, especially after the tower gets, or tower gold gets added to that graph. T1 tower in mid, it's almost going to be back to where by this is familiar, so he might actually be able to do so. But Clockwork is here trying to scare them, blink! Guaranteed Crick coming out from the Brewmaster, he cleans up one, and that's really not good for your visage, 140 seconds. Uh, before he gets another resummon available. Grave chills up one of the melee creeps to auto-attack that much faster. Um, but, yeah. That's about it. For now, we're just going to passively farm up Doom, sitting up in top lane and bottom. The group starts off for Bananas and Pajamas. They'll want the Doom available, but he has a TP, so he can join the fray, depending on when the fight breaks out. Blockwork Flare being thrown mid. They get the Vision. Um, but nobody is really there to capitalize on that. Just making sure that the lane doesn't push out too much. And it looks like Bananas and Pajamas really want this tier 1 tower. But with the time that you all have, they'll be able to drop the Serpent Wards. Or, um, rather, Venomous Wards. Or Plague Wards. Yeah, there we go, that one. Uh, the Plague Wards to help with the defense. They start out with the Fissure. It divides his attention. Shiva is going to be forced to drop Serpent Wards very early. The Gale's going to be off the mark, but I think the Souls will take him down. Brewmaster, he jumps in, not able to get anything. And while well, Piff, he jumps in onto a creep, but I don't think it's going to matter. He bounces back Triple Z, Triple A. Now they throw the ra or Visage up in the air. Not going to have any Souls just during this fight for the while. And now Eunice, he's focusing on these Brewmaster minions. They might actually die inside the split, and they get him. Brewmaster is going to die without uh, being able to really do much. And the Tier 1 Tower is going to 
would be defended. Two for two is the trade, and I think they're still going to be happy with that Razor. It's falling low after that hook shot, but or a uh, clockwork uh, flare, but in the end, without a hook shot, he's going to be just fine. Yeah. And the plus side, four bananas and pajamas will be able to secure some farm in the enemy jungle. Um, but that's about it. Yeah, these engagements have been really scrappy. And, I don't know, Doom is slowly but surely making a leeway as far as gold is concerned. Mostly due to the fact that he has Devour. He's actually picked himself up a Purge creep. Purge is good up against the Decrepify coming out from the Pugna. But that's about it. And you have to get very close range in order to do so. And I think the magical damage that they have... Um, will be enough to deal with the Pugna once he's in the Decrepify form. I don't know. Um, it's not that great, and being able to right-click is always nice. Um, yeah. Unconventional creep costs a lot of mana for the Doom, but with the uh, mana boots, he'll be able to sustain it. He's pretty much just going to have to get straight up into the grill. I think getting the stun creep is better from the Centaur, and potentially just mistakenly eat the Purge creep. Um, I don't know. I, I'd have to talk to X and Gray in order to know what his reasoning behind that was. Oh, they get another familiar and Visage forced to resummon 180 seconds without that. Yeah. I don't know. This Clockwork Flare animation is really bugging me. I'm not sure why. It's really big and kind of out of place. I think there's a little bit of bug with it uh, that's not really going on properly. Razor building towards that Aghanim Scepter after getting a casual ring of hell, uh, regen. Uh, very peculiar item choice there. Potentially uh, thinking they had to go for the mech for his team. Um, but Pogna is going to be building that up, and maybe we even see a pipe coming out from him later on. I don't know. I, against Bananas and Pajamas, I don't think it's a very important item for them to get, and I'm not really feeling this Ring of Regen. It helps you sustain in lane a little bit more, I suppose. Do something about that bottom tower. And yeah, the push is going to come down to this Tier 2 tower and bottom, but the initiation, they jump in the clockwork, it's blocked by the familiar, and oh, he's trying to chase him down, but he's caught in between four, and now they jump in, coming out from Roy Mustang, they drop the surfboards at a very inopportune moment, they're trying to be able to focus down Silvus at the very least, Earthshaker, he stuns up some of the uh, minions, they drop the silence, this one really hasn't been used that much, and Silvus caught in a corner, it'll be a one for one trade for now, we'll be able to chase anybody else down farm with me, he's going to be decrepified up with the Pugna Blast, but no other spells being thrown out his way, they purge up triple C, triple A, and now we're going to focus down him, it's going to be a two for one trade, um, right now and i think that's going to be about all it is but ball with venomancer no well, it's not going to be enough damage to take anybody down so we won't even bother throwing the soul assumption uh so bananas and pajamas as far as numbers are concerned they get a good trade but they lose their clockwork uh for the venomancer and earthshaker well i guess that is a farming venomancer so i guess it's okay but they also committed the serpent words to that so the pushing power is going to be neutered for a little bit longer hmm yeah slight advantage to bananas and pajamas Blink Tiger picked up by the Shadow Shaman, so we're going to have that way to initiate. Uh, he is starting to max out his hex, so his Blink Hex initiation is pretty strong. Um, Zella, he's going to get hookshot by Piff. This one's going to land, but yeah, nothing he can do about this. He tries for the life drain, but in the end, not going to happen. Yep, yep, yep. These Clockwork Hookshots have really been pretty lackluster coming out from Piff here. Um, but that one was on the mark, and in the end, going to make it work for him. Yep, so... Now, the tier 1 tower down and bottom should fall. Well, actually, without the Serp Wards, it's going to be a little bit harder for them to push, especially up against these Venomous kids, uh, venomous Plague Wards. And, well, they're looking for the wraparound. Blink forward by the Brewmaster. He catches out Silvos inside the trees. They aren't able to get enough damage off onto him. However, they dropped a level that the Gale is going to slow down both of them. And they're just kind of zoning while the right clicks are coming from that very powerful range creep there. Um, I don't know. The tier 1 tower is not really taking that much damage. And in the end, not a lot of spells being thrown back and forth either. X and Grander tower slow down. The Fissure is going to secure that they should be able to get this kill. I don't know. How are they going to commit Eunice? It's focusing down with the Eye of the Storm. It should be enough. They shackle Eunice under the wards. But in the end, the Shadow Shaman is going to be one gives up his life. X and Gray is actually turning around and he dies to the plasma people and just an extra damage coming out from them double kill for Zella. i believe it was actually the um nether blast that got him and piff he's going to be fissured up soul assumption comes through doesn't do the most amount of damage hook shots defensively away uh to the creeps and is able to secure his retreat that way you know, a very good team fight win for yules here and slowly but surely bananas and pajamas are losing their grip on this game it feels and well we'll go ahead and take a look at the graphs and after that uh fight ends up rounding out as well as this tower presumably going down it should be about even in the gold department and experience is going to be looking about the same way as well so yeah just like that bananas and pajamas they're like zero and five start is going to net them nothing in the end and i think at this point you will have the upper hand they have the bkb on the pugna razor as the agonim scepter online so their ability to take down these towers is very strong earth shaker Still saving up for what looks like a four staff with that ring of regen. Um, he will have it sooner rather than later while up in top TP away forced out by the silencer.
Uh, yeah, Agnum Scepter going to be very close to being completed by the Visage. Still needs about 800 gold or so um, before he's able to get that Blade of Alacrity. Had he not gone for the Arcane Boots, he would have had it completed. But with the Arcane, so we'll be able to Pugna Blast a lot more effectively with three pairs, I believe, on their team. All said and done. In fact, four pairs as the Venomancer also has a shiny blue pair of boots. And, well, Venomancer, he has the pipe for his team. Um, yeah, I'm okay with this pickup by the Venomancer, although it's not my favorite. Uh, against the uh, Bananas and Pajamas lineup. It's going to help them push high ground a lot easier. Um, even though the um, counter push isn't great coming out from Bananas and Pajamas, the Clockwork Flare as well as the Ether Shock is going to be mostly negated on the Creeps. Gale, oh, doesn't clip the Shadow Shaman, but the Vicious Birds just do so much damage they might even be able to kill him. We'll be able to chase down the Stomp, gets the last hit, and in the end, that's a Shadow Shaman soloed up by the... Um, Visage, Venomancer Gale wasn't even necessary. Had the Venomous Gale been there, it would have been an even easier kill, uh, but still. Yeah, no Serp Wards for this next fight. 30 seconds without the Shadow Shaman Tier 2 Tower. Looks like it's going to be in a bit of trouble here. With the ultimate pop by Eunice, as well as the Pugna Blast coming out from Zella, this should be a fairly easy tower. They're coming back to defend. Silencer's in position, and... Well, let's see. How is this going to break down as Brewmaster is looking for the jump in? Will he be able to find it? Hookshot goes on to Piff. He's being focused down, but the Blade Mail is doing more damage to Eunice. Eunice is going to be focused down. They get the Doom onto Zella after he gets the BKB off, however, so he's still going to be fairly tanky. Triple C, Triple A gets his ultimate off at a decent time, but it's really not doing all that much. Two to one is the trade so far. Visage sailing up in the air. They get the Boulder Shots on the Pugna. Blink forward by the uh, Centaur. He just, or, um, excuse me, the Doom. Doesn't have the Centaur stomp. Echo Slam come into X and Gray. They're going to be able to make this a two for three. As Roy Mustang is going to be stunned up, I don't think they have enough damage in order to really capitalize on this. The Visage Mirage really can't uh, commit in, as the Silencer might be able to actually get these with a blink in from the Brewmaster. The that said, mine, the top tower. yeah, I think that Bananas and Pajamas did admirably without their Shadow Shaman, and now goes straight into the Roshan, but going to make good use of the time that they bought with that last team fight. Although not a straight up win, they'll be able to take the second Roshan of this game and secure that one for Farm With Me. Farm With Me does have a BKB online, um, which helped them survive a lot better up against the enemy team. And I don't know, Vistas Promoters are going to be annoying, but they need to be careful or they might lose one. We might be seeing an Aegis Snatch or um, Deny or something. He's just going to stomp them in the pit. And in the end, Roshan is going to fall before they resummon. He might actually lose the Familiars for that little bit of move too. Well, looks like they're going to be just fine. Hookshot, I heard it. I didn't see where he went, though. Um, interesting. Clockwork, no Aghanim Scepter, so that's going to be a 50-second cooldown on that Hookshot for something that really didn't net him all that much. Potentially looking for the Visage Familiars? Honestly, I don't know. Um, but yeah, Bananas and Pajamas strike back. Um, but still, anybody's game is the distance between the uh, first and fourth uh, people on the net worth is less than uh, 600. So yeah, Blink Dagger online for the Earthshaker. You also have a big tool that they need to fight. Earthshaker's net worth is really not great, but I mean, what do you expect from a support Earthshaker in an even game? If he's stomping, he can get that Blink Dagger up, um, but other than that, Earthshaker, one of the poorest farming heroes. Yep, BKB also on the Doom, so BKB's galore. galore. Uh, let's see, we have one, two on the Dire side, and one on the Pugna. Um... Yeah, I know the BKBs are really good for bananas and pajamas to pick up, but it's really just helping them survive in the team fights. For now, that's enough, uh, but eventually they'll need a little bit more oomph um, in order to take these wins convincingly. Ball has the Aghanim Scepter completed as soon as he wants to buy the Blade of Alacrity, and there he goes. Triple Familiars up, as well as a summon that he has, so he can go ahead and re some those as soon as he gets the Scepter. So three Familiars are going to come out for Ball whenever he wants to use those, and there you go. Uh, the birds... At level 11, do an absolutely ridiculous amount of damage. We saw this is pretty much soloing up the Shadow Shaman with just the two. Now with the three, there's very little that they can do to stop the Shadow Shaman from dying solo to these. And they'll just do so much physical damage in the team fights. For now, I think that Ewells, despite being behind a little bit, are still in a good position to fight. That said, not if they get caught out by surprises. Smoke comes out. From Bananas and Pajamas, looking for a wraparound onto this Venomancer. Venomancer looking to be in a bit of a sticky situation here. Uh, but for now, they're just going to be two ships passing in the night. As, yeah, not scattered out. They're going to find out Zella, however, and Zella blown up. Poor Pugna. Well, at least the Vistas Familiars weren't taken down as that was a fresh resummon. They would have been down for quite some time. So in the end, Venomancer safe, Pugna not so much. Definitely worth the gold expend into the smoke. 
especially considering the fact that the Razor and nobody else on the map was really able to capitalize on that. They actually do get some of the familiars, and did any of them actually survive? The Visage is going to be familiarless for this next team fight. This is VIP go time. No Pugna, no familiars. Push into the tower, Surfboard's committed, and now Tier 2 looks like it's going to fall very quickly. Surfboard's actually going to drop a little bit of damage away of Yunus, and a Fisher comes out to delay the inevitable, it seems, as the Tier 2 tower really is only going to be half-heartedly defended by European love story. Well, lots of pings coming out, I'm not sure exactly why, um, but the enemy uh, jungle is going to be farmed up by Bananas and Pajamas. As the next tower, it looks like they have their sights set on is this tier 2 tower down in bottom. Without the Surf Wars, not an e uh, as easy a push, but they still have the Aegis on the Brewmaster to throw away. They have uh, three minutes on that one. Um, so, I don't know, he can go in pretty liberally. Maybe you um, save your ultimate till after you jump in with like Thunderclap and just make a nuisance of yourself. Uh, throw your first life and then come back immediately once you respawn. I don't know, that's a very poor way to play it, I feel. I think Brewmaster is quite possibly one of the worst Aegis carriers. Um, maybe Crystal Maiden being the number one. It's hard to think of another one that's um, as bad. He's very reliant on getting the transformations. The BKB comes out from Razor, starting to focus on the Clockwork. Clockwork getting his damage drained. 56, 84. He's going to hookshot back in, but that's just going to take more damage from the Eye of the Storm as the rest of the fight's breaking out in the back lines. Doom towards the Pugna. No man their blast coming out as they lose the Aegis onto Roy Mustang. He isn't going to use his ultimate beforehand. They will separate up the Silencer as the BKB animation was wearing off. And now with the Visage, they're going to be able to get that. And, well, that's two down on the side of Bananas and Pajamas. Now with the Brewmaster running rampant. Will they be able to get anything? I don't know. These Brewlings are just not doing enough. Soul Assumption again onto Piff. It's doing enough. Oh, will they be able to? chase him down with these birds they need to stop will the right click damage be there it's already been expended he gets the stomps but it doesn't catch out roy mustang outside of the uh rejoining himself after the transformation of his ultimate i don't know x and gray tping out will he be able to make it out alive no the enchant totem will be enough to make it a three for zero trade as well as the ages lost and disaster for bananas and pajamas yule is showing they've got what it takes unfortunately for them they don't have a tier two tower to take in the bottom lane as that was already taken previously in the game um but still, I'll take a uh, three for zero trade any day. Yep. Well, it looks like mid's going to be the next choice. Roy, he's going to get caught up with an Echo Slime, the follow-up Enchant Totem, but the hook shot comes in on the Silvus. Looks like Silvus is going to fall, but at the same time, Roy Mustang's taking so much damage from the Soul Assumption. Now the Pugna Blast is going to be enough. They're Soul assumption up Piff as well, and... He got the kill on the um, Earthshaker, but I guess hashtag worth it to say got the Brewmaster who was farming up in the safe lane. Blink away from the Shadow Shone. Looks like Tier 2 Tower is going to be pretty much forfeit, and for now it's going to calm down. Um, I don't know, maybe Yules are going to push in even more. Yeah, so away we go. As the Tier 2 Tower is going to be the next target for Yules, just going systematically about these. Um, once they uh, get up there and the Brewmaster comes back, he will have the split available, but I think they'll be able to take this tier 2 without much trouble at all, especially with um, Plague Wards, Pugna, and the Visage Triple Familiars online. By no means this is an incredibly fast Aghanim Scepter on the Visage, it was picked up quite a while ago, but it's still an amazing Aghanim Scepter upgrade. Effectively 50% increase in your damage is amazing. Yep, and now also Razor chipping away with the Eye of the Storm. It will force out the Glyph for five seconds, but the Shadow Shum is just being harassed by these dumb birds. They're just like pooping all over poor Shiva, and Shiva completely zoned out, not able to drop the surfboards. I think Tier 2 Tower is going to be forfeit. Visage gets the last hit without the birds, and well, yeah, that's not a great place to be. And Pugna gets himself an Aghanim Scepter, and now I think for one of the first times in the game, we're going to have a gold lead for Yules after. The Gold Graphs update, that is. Visage picks herself, or himself, itself, up a Vladimir's Offering. Although nobody's going to benefit from the lifesteal, the extra armor is going to be very helpful. Up against the Serpent Wards especially, and I don't know, I think it's an underrated item on teams that don't really benefit from the lifesteal. I think the aura is just too good to pass up most of the time. Um, especially on a support that has that extra slot and needs the armor. Like, Visage has zero base armor, absolutely, and really is tanking this all comes from Gravekeeper's Cloak, and I think he's a pretty good uh, Vladimir's Offering Carrier for your team. Uh, yeah. Urshaker, the only one that will actually get the lifesteal, and he's not right-clicking that much, with the exception of the Enchant Totem hits. Um, oh, no. I, I, I still like it. I, I think it's fine. Well, BKB, and now the workings of an Aghanim Scepter picked up by the Venomancer. 
Well, he's going to be hookshot. Oh, will they be able to follow up with the cogs? He bounces him back. Not sure if he really wanted to do that. And without any follow-up, really inbound to uh, catch out Triple C, Triple A. He'll be fine. Just swaggers off towards the south. Um, yeah, I don't know. The uh, Venomancer, he's starting to get pretty tanky. at 1,600 HP with the extra magic resist as well as the Avatar uh, coming out from the BKB. He stands up surprisingly well to a lot of the punishment coming out from Bananas in Pajamas. Well, looks like mid might be where Earthshaker wants to spring his trap card as he is kind of hanging around inside the Roshan, but they have vision of him. And now Echo Slam onto two with the follow-up Enchant Totem and Fissure. Where's the backup? He gets the Shadow Shaman at the very least, and now TP time coming out from farm with me. Will be able to cancel the Enchant Totem yet again? And that's a two for nothing as Earthshaker, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Earthshaker inside the Roshan pit and just made a beautiful leap. Bam. X marks the spot, and that's... Nice two kills. I don't know, not an incredibly hard play to pull off, but it was well-timed and in the end wasn't expected by Bananas and Pajamas and slammed it in. They have a buyback on the silencer should they need it for this next fight, but I don't know. This is looking to be Yule's opportunity to start putting some damage onto this tier 3 tower. Eunice is working towards this refresher, won't have it for quite some time, but once he does, maybe that's really the time when they can go high ground? We'll see. Grape Chill comes out from the Visage. They push out the lane very well. They get a Fissure on a Piff, and now he's being focused down. They have the Blood, uh, excuse me, Blight Mail, uh, doing some return damage. Uh, back Shadow Shum completely zoned out. BKB on Eunice as well as the Agnum Scepter, Eye of the uh, Storm, focusing on the tower. They jump in with Shiva, but he's just zapped to death as he tries to drop the wards and kills himself on the Pugna Ward. Completely forgot about it, and in the end, not going to have it for this team fight. X and Grace stealing. So much of his damage is 112 is being given away and Doom's also going to die. And now that should be our first lane of racks going in favor of Yules after, I don't know, a ball going to be caught out by the clockwork. But I don't think this actually matters as birds are a lot more important. The split is going to come out as well as the global. Where has this global really been all this game? Ball gets a double kill from beyond the grave as he does die. The melee barracks is down and it looks like Yules are just going to try to retreat out. Yunus stealing some damage as he tries to get out of their life. Level death comes out and a nice fissure to block that off but the hook shot off of cooldown yet again with that Aghanim Scepter. Clockwork gets himself a double. Um, so I think all said and done this is fairly even as far as kills are concerned trade but melee barracks is down. And Yule should be very happy with that. Um, yeah, I don't know. This Razor is getting to the point where he's incredibly scary. He'll have to refresh him for the next site, which means double BKB, double Eye of the Storm, which is absolutely going to shred through those towers. Once he had uptime on the tower damage, like, they just fell too quickly. With the Visage Familiars, Pugna, and Razor, this is ridiculous. Earthshaker finally has himself a 4 staff, which is going to be a great boon for him and his team, especially up against the Clockwork. Um... I don't know, a little bit late, you would have liked to see that earlier on, but in the end, not going to be the biggest of deals. Venomancer has his um, Aghanims as well, going to give him some extra tank, and he's going to kill up the Shadow Shaman pretty much solo with the help, or rather, with the help of the Fisher from the Earthshaker, but wow, they're going for the Roshan now, and they should be able to get this one. Is your Cheese Roshan, as is the third in the game, all coming the way of Bip, but mm, this is not a great place to fight, and Earthshaker has the Echo Slam. And I think he might be able to find it. Just spamming out the vision to start this off. They should know this is going. Yeah, especially with the Vistas from where scouting it out. I don't know. They leave one and looking for an Aegis tonight at the very least. Will they be able to get the Aegis picked up by the Silencer? Another fight's going to start breaking out. BKB coming out from X and Grey. As they jump in for Ball. Ball is, I don't know, just going to be completely wrecked by the Shadow Summon Wards. We have the Cheese pop by the Brewmaster. Keep himself alive. And the Doom towards the Pugna. Hookshot from long range. Catches the Pugna onto the back lines. But I don't know. Let's see how this is going to work out for them. BKB's gold war. Everybody's yellow and glowing. The Venomaster can't do much damage at all. As the Shadow Shaman dies. And it looks like Silencer lost his Aegis as well. No, excuse me. The Sh uh, just as on so losing his ages, but these Brulings, they're dying too quickly. They might die inside his ultimate form. I don't know. We will see as uh, Farm With Me is being focused down. Yule Scepter's up the razor in the air, but he's going to be slowed down as well. Life Drain only going to last a split second as Brewmaster rejoins himself, but Farm With Me is going to die a second time in this team fight. They lost their supports, but I think that's still okay for Yule. And well, that's pretty much all of the gas out of the team fight tank coming out from Bananas and Pajamas. And I think that they can go for a second set of racks here. Um,. Yeah, push through mid and then go to top. They'll, at the very least, secure themselves a ranged barracks with this one. Agnum, or Refresher, going to be delivered towards the Razor, and he has a decent amount of gold on top of it. The ranged barracks is going to be the first to fall, but it'll have the BKB as well as Refresher ulti up in about 10 seconds or so uh, for the double duration of both. Yeah, Clockwork Fishing for Rooks, but with the Agnum Scepter, you can just go for those pretty casually. 
bottom lane going to be the choice coming out from Yules. As everybody is going to be back up shortly, I don't know, this Silencer pick just really hasn't done anything for me. He's stolen 28 Intelligence, and at this point in the game, that's that's pretty good. It's, it's not great, it's not awful, but these Globals just haven't really done anything. I mean, it's not a great game to be a Silencer, I just don't think the pick really worked out for them. The uh, Global Ultimate doesn't really do much at uh, disjointing Yule's Chain of Initiation. A little bit of network lag coming out uh, here as... Here as they're starting to jerk around on the screen. Uh, hopefully that's not going to affect too much. Very peculiar. Um, but, yeah, Venomancer getting some extra intel as he spots out the Shadow Shaman. And Shadow Shaman just going to wait for his blink. Actually going to TP out in the face of danger. No way to cancel that. Four staff, nope. No fissure coming out from the Earthshaker in time. Assault Kira's picked up by the Doom. A big pickup for Bananas and Pajamas. Uh, especially considering the Eye of the Storm coming out from the Razor, but still it looks like the push is going to start coming out from Yules, and this is a very scary push at the very least. Yeah, the lag is starting to become pretty important, but here comes the secondary Eye of the Storm being popped up before he gets the BKB off. Unfortunately, he gets doomed after the BKB coming out from Eunice. He's starting to focus down these Brulings, and now the lag is real as X and Gray is getting focused down by the Eye of the Storm, and the Eye of the Storm will get the kill on him. No, it's going to change targets in the nick of time, but eventually he will be brought down. I believe the Visage was the one who got that. The life drain on the, shadow, or onto the clockwork will be enough to silence her. He used his global ultimate, but now he's going to die to another uh, soul assumption coming out from Ball, and well, at least the lag is at the very end of the game as they get another kill. Venom is the only one dying just yet, and Eunice will be able to make it back to base. With just the Pugna as well as the Vistas Familiars, they should be able to get this uh, two through towers. They jump in. The Serboards are committed down to the tower, but the uh, Familiars are there as well to focus on Shiva. They get stunned up once. One of the Familiars was dropped, and it's all they needed with the Visage, or with the Fissure to follow up, and a killing spree for Ball. Yeah, definitely a little bit laggy here. Hopefully that doesn't take away too much from the game. Uh, but in the end, two three tower, it looks like it's going to be next slip in destruction is the only buyback on the side of the dire is on the silencer and it just can't really cut it this is going to be our second lane of barracks going the way of yules as razor pushes out top and they'll be able to transition towards top very quickly as well this might just be mega creeps a fond farewell to the dire's bottom barracks i don't know it's yeah I, I think they can do it there's there's not really a lot stopping them except for the lag and they'll just go for the tier 4 towers, just starting Pugna blasting them away. They only land onto one of the tier 4s, and now the Visage Familiar is going to start plinking away at those as well. Next Pugna Blast will secure the tower, and... Yep, next tier 4, it looks like they're just going for the full out GG pushes. Razor is also coming through. He has one Eye of the Storm already popped, won't have the double for another 60 seconds, so it's fine to pop it in the base. They jump in a little bit with the Clockwork, but it's not really going to amount to much. Deny on the tier 4 tower, not going to come out, and the... Uh, Ancient is exposed. A lot of gold going the way of Yules, and I don't know. I they've done it. Let's see. Doom onto the Pugna. Pugna being chased down. Will they have enough damage? It looks like the Doom is going to take him down. As this is pretty much a slideshow as they slow down Ball. Shiva's as well as the Thunderclap came down. He summons the Familiars. Not able to do much damage as they hookshot into the Familiars. And Ball eventually he will die. My goodness, this is getting really bad. Volvo servers, please. Uh, but they get two kills. I'm not sure it's going to do anything as Razor's here. He could just BKB Eye of the Storm and then walk up to their front door. I don't see them doing anything about that. Without the Doom, they just don't have anything to really stop this Razor from doing his business. As now they catch out Roy Mustang as he jumps in. He's going to slow both of them down, blink away by the Earth Shaker. Not going to disjoint that, as they don't think you can. And while the pipe is going to come out, they're going to stop the damage. And now they stun him first. He's going to be able to get the split off with the Vistas from Mars. Maybe the... Oh, I don't know. The Echo Slam committed. It does not do very much of anything. And that's unfortunate for the Earth Shaker as well. They bring him back down. The Refresher pop by Eunice. He gets the second eye of the storm. And yeah, it's actually... I'm like... It's really not worth it at this point to uh, load back into the game because I'm not sure I'd be able to get back in time uh, to see the end of it. I don't know what the way this is going. No, let's see. Please, please, some bizarre lag. I don't know. I'm, I, I think this is on Austria server, which isn't the best for me, but usually it's not this bad. Either way, Razor, uh, with the double eye of the storm, just kind of farm some creeps. I don't think um, that using it there was a great decision. It didn't end up doing much. I think you saved that for the uh, high ground. And I haven't seen him use the double BKB yet this game. Um, also a thing that I'd like to see him wait for, because really, once he has the BKB on, there's very little that Bananas and Pajamas can do, and he'll also have a second BKB to go through the global if he so needs to. Um, yeah, so I think you just BKB, Eye of the Storm, hit the tower, and then you refresh, and then as soon as the global comes out, you BKB again, Eye of the Storm again, and just keep it up. Yeah, the counter push is going to be enough for now, as the Venomancer has just joined the rest of his team. 
And well, the pipe. Here comes the first eye of the storm, and he has the BKB available. We're probably just gonna save it for the global. I don't know. He might not even need to do so. Boots of travel on the Earthshaker. He wants to join the rest of his team, keeping the creep wave behind them. Even though they don't have the Echo Slime, they can still win this team fight fairly convincingly, especially since the Silencer is just YOLO pushing down and bottom. I guess he pretty much has to. I don't know. There's going to be a Fissure. Catches X and Gray on the wrong side, and he's decently tanky. And they won't be able to catch him out just yet. They have a new creep wave that's being slowed down by the Fissure, and it's actually helping. Um, the counter push a little bit. Plasma Field and a little bit more blasting is all they need to get this creep wave down, but it's slow and steady for Yules as they wait for the next creep wave. Well, in we go, possibly, as they just keep on farming it up. Razor picks himself up a Heart of Thrask recipe and does have the Vitality Booster on the Courier, so just going to straight up deliver that to himself. They have a Scythe of Bias onto the Silencer, who was able to do a decent job of slip pushing, getting the Tier 2 tower in bottom in the meantime the Siege was going. Um, well, his team was able to defend without him, so I guess that's okay. Um, this Scythe of Bias, I'm not sure it's really going to do enough up against Yules, but it's going to be helpful uh, for sure. But I think Razor can liberally pop his BKB since he has two, and... With 3,600 HP as well as the unstable current uh, passive, he's going to be very hard to take down. And not to mention the extra health coming out from uh, Mechanism on himself. Oh, actually, uh, he has does not have it. It's on the Pugna as well as the Pipe on the Venomancer. Yeah, Eunice, I think there's no reason not to just go straight up high ground at this point. Especially with an Assault Cuirass in the Visage. Just walk up there. There's very little stopping you. I mean, he doesn't have buyback, so dying is pretty important if he does do so. Um, but I think they'll be able to keep him safe. I mean, honestly, what you can do is you can just sit up on the high ground next to the tower with the double eye of the storm going face away, and if stuff hits the van, you can get four step away by the Earthshaker. Now, there's the tier 3 tower. It's just going to get absolutely shredded once these creeps die with the pipe as well on the ground. They just don't care. Echo Slam in the back lines catches out two heroes, it seems, to follow up Fisher, but no Echo Slam. They drop the silence, but again, it's just not doing very much. Warrior Mustang is able to get off his ultimate. No, they might have enough to educate Eunice, and they will. 95 seconds without him, but the tier 3 tower is, oh, well, it's still standing strong, and it looks like a decent suspense coming out from Bananas and Pajamas. Elvis is also going to die, and now everybody's just flying up in the air. Yule Scepter's galore as the Soul Assumption coming out from Ball. Will he be able to get the kill on the silencer? It looks like he just to the poison damage ball is going to fall to the Roy Mustang as he gets himself a triple kill. They're going to decrepify life drain up Roy Mustang and he's going to die as he's forced after away by an ally. So as valiant as that defense was and possibly as good as it can go, I think that's about it. As Visage gets himself the tower and buybacks coming out galore. This is pretty much the final stand. Thunderclap coming out as the Earthshaker is in the back lines. Very precarious situation for him. As the Fist is trying to focus down the Shadow Shaman, won't be able to do so as the damage has already been spent. The Ancient at so low HP at about a thousand in the meantime while they're fighting. That's all they need to do. And now the range creeps. I think that's GG for all intents and purposes. Creeps MVP as they take it. The Glyph coming out too late. GG well played. They're going to make this series one for one in the very end. Bananas and Pajamas not er. Rather, 2-0 in the end, even though Bananas and Pajamas had a pretty convincing lead to start this out. I can't really look at the graphs, but as you see, it kind of looped up down and about, kind of looking like a heartbeat. Well, that's um, the sound of the heartbeat of Bananas and Pajamas failing as they lose this series 2-0 to European Love Story. Yeah, I thought they'd be able to take it um, after the way that the early game went for them. But then again, I liked Yule's draft better, and in the end, it paid out for them. Their pushing power with the Razor Refresher as well as the Pugna and Visage was just too strong. Uh, well, that's going to be it here on Hevlo TV. I believe that's going to be the last series that's going to be cast here, at least for now. I'll leave it up for a little bit longer with some music and some ads, but... Um, yeah, in the meantime, you can watch those in order to support us. It's a great way to do so. Uh, it really is appreciated if you sit through those ads. Um, also, you can follow us if you like the casting here on Hefla TV 1 and 2 for English coverage. German can be found at Hefla TV 3 and 4. And Chinese, a uh, new project that's just been started, can be found at 5 and 6. And I believe they were casting uh, some of the earlier games today. So pretty cool to watch those guys uh, do their thing. Uh, other than that, you can find us on social media at Hefla TV, at both Twitter and Facebook, and the VODs will be uploaded to youtube.com slash HeflaMoke. If you want to watch another game um, or want to share it with your friends, that's the way to do it. Um, so thank you for watching. That's going to be it for now. Um, Grandis V signing out.